Okay, so this video is uh, how we evacuate uh, a patient uh, that's riding a chairlift that's got to come back to the front side because all our resources for transport and everything else is on the front side. So any resort that has like a back ball or whatever, here it's Mineral Basin. And right back here we have an empty uh, toboggan, um, but normally at, on a real call we would have a, a patient in here. This toboggan is sitting on top of a rack and it's secured by two blue NRS straps um, on each side. So the toboggan is secured to the rack with blue NRS straps. And as part of the rack system, this uh, little tagline lives with the rack at all times. And it's about 100 feet of six mil. And this is so that we can actually um, haul up the kit. So we're gonna haul up the kit and uh, rig uh, a way to lower this entire rack uh, down to the ground uh, for other transport should the lift fail due to whatever reasons there's a sequence of steps uh, to be able to like do this efficiently so normally you'd have two patrollers uh, tending our, our uh, victim subject uh, patient and we're all wearing our skis we have our poles and so in order to make work easier for us we're gonna dual purpose this tagline out for, for a bunch of things um, but we need to secure it uh, to the rack because it's going to be like an anti-spin tagline for the rack once we actually lower it But we're also going to rig our skis up and drop our skis and poles on the tagline to the ground crew And then once they receive them, we're going to haul up uh, the evac kit and, and then start the process So when we look at how the tagline is kind of rigged in the bag um, I want to have access to both tails So when I open this up both my terminal tails are, are here. Um, that's important. I just want to make sure I look down and see which one's at the bottom. So this is the bottom t tail that I stuck with first. Um, so I'm going to undo this and I'm going to attach this to the rack itself. And you can be with any kind of knot, whatever, overhand follow through, figure eight follow through, bow line, whatever. It doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to find a, a point somewhere on the rack to tie into. Which is right down there. I want to make sure that when I tie this, I don't weave this tagline into the chair itself because then it'll get hung up completely. Um, so here, like an easy spot for me, will probably be right there because I can reach that pretty well. Um, I don't want to have to reach for anything because I'm not secured. Okay, we can start to take our skis off um, as best we can. If we drop them, it is what it is, but we're going to try to take them off here, latch everything together, and then hook it up in the tagline and send it on its way down. Okay, so I'm out of my binding. I'm gonna try to grab my ski. Okay, that's one. That's two. And pulse. Okay, always a good idea to be able to have some sort of ski strap handy as this will help kind of secure your initial stuff together. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is with the other end, the other tail, um, it's just a simple matter of whatever you wanna do here is fine. I'm gonna do like a clove hitch and then a couple half hitches on the length of the ski. So terminal end, I'm gonna do a big clove hitch. See that okay? So a big flow pitch. I'm just gonna put this around my tips. So I'm gonna go vertically down and right here I'm just gonna throw in a half pitch. Just like that. And then, and then we lower down. And we're just going to repeat that process um, again like we have three of us up here but in reality it'll be two people so we're just going to repeat this process um, two more times yeah just like that perfect Thanks. simple half itch now we're ready to rock and roll all right skis coming down And uh, so since Will's our rescuer, he can start harnessing up, which I think he already did. So we all carry uh, these seat harnesses that we can put on 
while we're actually seated in a chair um, without having to take anything off. So he has a seat harness, but we're kind of in this industrial environment, general industry. And the, the reality is we aren't gonna have full body harnesses up here and trying to put on a full body harness while we're uh, up in this environment is, I would argue it's more dangerous. Uh, but the kit that we're gonna haul up has a chest harness uh, adapter into the belay loop with a rated sternal follow rest point. So uh, we can get pretty close to, we're basically converting that into a full body harness on the fly. So that's a good compromise. Okay, it looks like we're rigged. We're gonna start hauling the uh, evac bag up. Evac kit is on its way up. We're just gonna untie the tag line and then drop the tag line back to the ground. And they, the ground crew is just gonna operate the tag line from here on out once we lower the package. All right, so now that we have our kit, if we open it up, ideally the first thing that should come out is, is this chest adapter. So Will's gonna put the chest adapter on. The chest adapter is pre-rigged with a work positioning or fall restraint Grion lanyard. Um, and as well as some webbing, um, what we're gonna do is if we look at the J-bar above us right there, uh, we're going to create a, fr a friction hitch. We could do a standard three wrap prusik um, is probably okay. Um, with webbing, webbing um, climb heights work a little bit better with webbing. So um, really it doesn't matter what you do because there are a lot of friction hitches that are appropriate. Um, we just want an appropriate friction hitch uh, with webbing. That looks better. flat carabiner hooks into the belay loop right there and then we cinch it up make it tight and now for all practical purposes we've now instantaneously converted into a, a class 3 full body harness with a sternal rated uh, arrest point and we need to it's pretty high to establish our friction hitch so we need to progress and a good way to do this um, with the Grion lanyard is to just drape that terminal end up and over and cinch it back on itself and choke up so that Will is protected as he makes this initial transition. If you can just toss it over like all that, just give it a quick flip. There we go. And while there's no arrest, uh, you know, the fall arrest mechanism is impractical in this environment, but the green on lanyard works really well. And so um, we deem this acceptable. We'll keep the bar down. I'll see if you can get out of that. So, wheel is starting to make his way up. He's protected here. So his primary means of support is hands, or feet really, and then back up is a taut work positioning lander, ball restraint lander. This is the only point where you're kind of hanging it out there, because you're gonna have to temporarily disconnect from here and then quickly reconnect there. Right. So we're gonna do some one fail swoop move. Clip in, and now we suck all the slack. All right, now Will's ready to climb up uh, and establish uh, all the equipment uh, as far as the anchor. So uh, the next thing out of the kit uh, is gonna be uh, these two anchor slings. They're kind of pre-tied uh, loops. Um, the bright red is gonna be the primary anchor uh, over the haul cable. And then the, this is just a positioning uh, sling to keep the anchor. Cause if you look, we're, we're on a slope. If you look down there, we don't want our anchor to slide down the cable. And that's what the positioning uh, sling does for us. Yeah, can I go higher? Yep, that, you can climb okay. higher too. So that, that's why we have I the green. I prefer to do that. Uh, let's do that. You can stand on the bar here and go higher and choke up on your, and slide that hitch up yep. and stand up. And just make sure you're, you're, kept, you're kept taut. So Will is pretty tall and even Will needs uh, more distance. So now he's gonna step on the, uh, our little restraint bar down here just to get the height he needs to be able to grab that bite as he flings it up and over the hole. Cool, perfect. So since this is a training environment, um, 
we would need uh, a secondary line. Again, in real life, this is our system. We're good to go. Uh, but since we're training, we have another rope that we're going to launch up and over uh, in addition to that. So any appropriate midline loop uh, with a long tail, in this case it's just a bowline, um, but you could do a butterfly or whatever. Uh, this will be another connection to our patient, uh, our simulated patient in a training environment. Um, I have a line saver that we're going to put up and over because we're going to belay from the ground. And then with this, just give me that part of it. I'm just going to temporarily just hold on to this. Okay, one more thing we need to do is we're, we're piggybacking the positioning strap. So um, our belay also needs to be held in place so that it doesn't roll down uh, the haul cable. And so here we'll take this carabiner and we're going to go into the pair of red loops. Just like this? Yep. And then encapsulate. Yeah. Okay, cool. We will need to make sure that the cam on the jag is engaged so we don't lose progress on the hull. So we're set. Okay, we're okay. set. Cool. And now, Will, you can actually just descend down on your jag or your drion, and we're going to start to rig up our bridle. So our bridle is pretty plainly marked. Uh, we have head and feet, and usually when we're transporting a patient, we leave the front horns in, uh, the rear ones come out by default. We aren't going to take these horns out we're just going to leave them as is because trying to turn ourselves around and work back here that's just additional work that we don't really need to do so we're just going to leave the front horns in um, the front horns usually are where the feet go on the on the patient and then their, their head is on the back so if you look at how our bridle is labeled we have feet here we'll work that around and then go head and when we connect our bridle, we want to make sure that nothing's twisted. So uh, we'll try to just take the extra second to make sure everything's clean. The easiest way to do this is to actually connect uh, to the ones that are harder to reach first. So if we look on the opposite side, this is where Will's going to have to kind of like do some climbing uh, yeah. <laughs> and hunching over the patient. So he's going to have to go slack on his rion lanyard and kind of extend his body out and grab onto the chains that exist on the downside of that. Let's see if we can get right there. Yeah. So we'll hook in there with the foot. So yeah, we want to make sure that this is what it says is front horns. Yep, low and far. So pretty self-explanatory in there. Okay. Hard to tell. What we want to do is make sure that this distance between uh, the knot that is. Uh, encapsulating the bull ring uh, and the device itself so this is about four inches and this can creep out on you we want to make sure that that knot is sucked all the way up against the ID uh, that just sets us up for success and then once we do that we, we want to make sure that we're routing our brake strand through high friction mode so through the horn and now we're set for success since this is a training environment as well uh, and we have this belay line we're also going to hook this in standby to our bull ring yeah i just want to make sure that it, nothing's tangled or twisted yep right there and then we lock it um we there's an option and it's it's what do we do with the patient as far as securing them um so our in a real life scenario this black line with the, the additional uh terminal tail is not going to be here but we also have a mirror image of that uh we have a terminal tail end on our right um, and this is an option it's to hook into the patient because you could argue in this scenario our, our patient in all likelihood is probably not wearing a harness of any type our, our patient's secured into the toboggan and the toboggan is secured into the rack but only minimally uh, it's not like a true high angle where we have internal and external lashing and, and we can say with hundred percent certainty that our patient it truly is secure um, so this is going to be a judgment call for the rescuer and it's conditional based because you have to figure out, well, what, what condition is my patient in and how hard is it going to be for me to get a, a harness onto the patient and clip this tail in to justify that, okay, our patient is 100% in the system, secured into the system. Uh, it's not a belay line. It's just, it means that they're secured into the system. Uh, so that's a hundred percent judgment call for the rescuers. Um, we aren't going to deflate a vacuum splint uh, to, to try to put a harness on. That's just 
as an example, right? Um, if they are in a vacuum splint, we could probably clip this to handle the vacuum splint. We do whatever is prudent. We just want to be able to articulate and justify, um, you know, safety versus redundancy versus speed and timeliness. Um, so again, putting a, a harness on your patient is rescuer's discretion. You should always consider it, uh, but the ultimate decision is on you. Okay. Um, we're actually on a different chairlift um, than what this is designed for, and that's another reason we don't have a victim in here, is normally uh, these holes would be underneath, and there's these uh, pre-rigged bungees with pens right here that we always secure whenever we're transporting uh, a victim or patient from mineral basin back to the front side. Uh, uh, once we have all this rigged up and we're satisfied, it, you know, we've loaded it correctly, everything tests out, we're going to undo the pens. Uh, that's critical because that'll hang us up. If it's that one last step before we actually do the final push out. Um, this is a two person job um, and it's going to require that Paul uh, pushes the rack away as Will is hauling on the jag in order to make sure that these bars clear. Again, this is just for training purposes. We want a two rope system, so the way line. So we're set there. And that's fine. They're going to rig an ID and operate a ground base belay. And we're going to lower uh, from here. Holly on the Jag is probably not going to be as easy as you think it's going to be because, uh, worst case, if we have like a 450 pound load here, which we could easily have if you combine the weight of the rack and the, and the toboggan plus medical gear plus a heavy patient. You could potentially be hauling like 100 pounds plus on that jag, so just something to be uh, mindful of. So notice that we also took uh, the rest of the rope from the MBX evac kit and then we dropped the rest of the bag down to the ground. That's just going to help manage uh, our workspace up here. Um, do you have to do it? No, but it's easier for us to move maneuver. The less stuff we have in this space, the better. Okay. On you. All right. Just say right, lower. Paul, let's start lowering. Okay. Lowering. thing about all this is trying to do work when you're on a chair with limited space it's tight quarters everything you do makes uh makes the job a lot harder um, from the simplest tasks to the most complicated so um you can imagine if this was windy uh this thing would be prone to spinning so tagline operation is key and once this is down um the rescuers in the chair all we're going to do is just dc all this and then Pretty much toss this all to the ground and uh in a real life rescue um our job as rescuers in the chair is over and now we can consider to be victims or subjects just like the general public and so we're just going to get lowered with standard chairlift evac methods so we sit tight um the only uh exception may be if we have a doc with us for a critical patient that may need to go with um, in that case um, there's a bunch of ways to skin that cat that i won't cover in this video but we can dual purpose out uh, this uh, the lowering line um, for a, a static repel but we won't cover that in this video those are uh, exceptions and very rare exceptions so um, and that's it that's your mineral basin express toboggan evacuation from the backside this is all bonus for training purposes so we had to derig all our lines from here re-rig them over here um, the black line we're repurposing for a a working line they're going to lower it's going to be a ground base lower they're going to lower us out um, and then an independent self belay static line via asap and that's what we're going to do with the white um, so here you go paul Take that. all right so i had to thread it and make sure that my stopper a stopper knot on one of the white lines reached the ground which it does i need to create uh two butterflies like right in here somewhere 
And this is how we do beaner blocks, or static blocks as they call them. So I do one butterfly, and you can zoom in for this if you want. So there's one butterfly. This butterfly knot is going to be what blocks against something else. Um, and I'm going to tie another butterfly knot just below it so that the cable itself is going to sit in here and we're going to block. So we're going to do another butterfly right there or any appropriate knot. This isn't really critical. Butterflies work really well. Um, but the, the tighter you can get your knot, the better. Okay. So with the lower one, I need to rig a block into it somehow. And the best way to do this, um, I don't have any rope protection over the top, but that's not a big deal, is I'm gonna clip a beaner into the lower one with a pulley. And with this pulley, because the space here is so small, um, I'm gonna clip it back on itself on the rope. And because it's so small, it's gonna adequately provide for a block. See that? So this is the lower knot, carabiner to a pulley. And what we're gonna do now is, since this, this side is my, my static side, we're gonna to continue to pull. And as we pull, we're gonna pop this knot up and over. And if you can assist, get that thing popped up. Can you see how it blocked up there? So full line, static block, full line, static block. And this is how we get out during training. So static line. He's being lowered and the pin itself away on the ASAP while we fall rest. Yep. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs>